have you guys ever wanted to keep Caradina shrimp and were just too afraid to? I know a lot of people say they're super difficult, but today I'm going to show you two types of Caradina shrimp that I believe you can keep with very little effort and they're pretty easy. What is going on shrimp keepers? This is Rob with flipaquatics.com and today we are talking about two types of caradina shrimp that I believe are pretty easy to keep and beginner friendly. So let's first talk about the types of caradina shrimp and then I'll show you what I think you're going to need to be successful keeping them. So the first type are these guys right here. These are one of the most popular caradina shrimp out there. They're called crystal red shrimp or CRS if you've ever seen that before. These guys are extremely beautiful. They have white and red, very nice contrast. The more white they have, the higher the grade. Um, I personally like the more red, so I go for C grade. Now we get into grading later, but these guys are actually extremely easy to keep and they can survive in a wide range of parameters. So in the ideal world, they like a pH of less than seven. They like only GH in their water. And we'll talk about all this in a, in a little bit. We'll go over the entire setup but these guys can actually survive in a pH of higher than seven, and uh, they're really stunning. This is actually the type of shrimp that really kicked off the shrimp hobby, in my opinion. The crystal red shrimp is where genetics really got into it, patterns really got into it, and this is like the first real Caradina shrimp that everyone went wild from. And in Taiwan, a lot of the big breeders, they got started with crystal reds. And some of these retailed for thousands of dollars. Now you can get them for about seven, eight bucks, sometimes even cheaper, sometimes a little bit more. And these guys are just absolutely stunning. Again, the way that they grade is the more white they have and the less red, the higher the grade. And the amount of intensity they have of color always makes them a higher grade. But this is definitely the first type that I believe is super easy for you all to keep. And we'll talk about what you can do to actually keep these in just a little bit. All right, guys, the second type of caradina shrimp that I believe is a beginner friendly caradina shrimp would be these guys. These are tangerine tigers. We actually have two different types. We actually have the USA bred version and then the imported version. There's really no difference. Um, one is just bred in the United States. The other one's imported by us from Taiwan. And uh, they're both very hardy. They both have that really nice orange color and uh, just an amazing shrimp. This is actually a tiger species and they can survive in a wide range of parameters again. These guys can actually live their lives in a pH above seven. While I don't recommend it, you definitely can do it. And these guys give you another color option that truly pops. And if you ever wanted to mix caradina shrimp, the one thing I will say, if you mix different types of, let's say crystals, let's say you want crystal reds that we just talked about, potentially crystal blacks, you're gonna kind of get like either crystal reds, crystal blacks, a little bit of brown. These guys, tangerine tigers, if you ever mix tigers with crystals you get high bees you'll get some funky patterns a lot of cool stuff comes from them and that's where genetics come from and you can really start building things like pintos and you know that galaxy pinto things like that that are really out there and different so if you're a beginner and you're looking to get in caradina shrimp you can try these you can even try these with crystals and create some really cool patterns So you guys know me, I can't just give you two types of shrimp. I gotta give you little bonuses, little tidbits of information. So here is another shrimp that I think could be really good for beginners. Now, this one is a little bit more sensitive, but I wanna talk about it because I think it's gonna make a lot of sense to you all. So these are red fancy tigers. This is what you get when you mix things like tangerine tigers and crystal reds. You're gonna start producing these kind of funky patterns that are a lot of fun but because these guys have such a genetic pull, they have a lot of different genetics. So they're getting the genetics of, say, the tiger shrimp. They're getting the genetics of the crystals. Combine that all together, you get a really healthy shrimp. These guys are a lot more tolerable to different parameters because they have that really good genetic pull. So I would recommend these guys if you're looking for something a little bit different, but you can always buy tangerine tigers and crystal reds and create something like this yourself. So with everything, you have to have the right setup to do it. Like, as, as much as these are beginner shrimp, you can buy them, just throw them in an aquarium that you have set up. You might have success, you might not. But you always wanna do your homework. You wanna set yourself up for success. So this is what I think is the bare minimum of what you need 
to be successful. So what we're looking at is a 20 gallon long, which is a great tank size. It's one of our favorite tank sizes. As the substrate, we're actually using shrimp specific substrate. This is Rio Oscuro by Brightwell. It's our favorite substrate. They're one of our sponsors. They hook us up on this stuff, which is awesome of them. So huge shout out to Brightwell. And this substrate is what holds the pH stable for these shrimp. They prefer a pH of less than seven. That Brightwell is gonna do that. It's gonna achieve that. And that stuff can last probably about two years, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, I know people go up to four years. We don't do that. We usually change that around the two year mark. So you have the substrate. The next thing you need is a good filter. Now you can go get a canister filter. You can get, you know, just crazy on filtration. We're all about the kiss method, which is keep it simple, stupid. And so we use matten filters, which all a matten filter is, is a piece of foam that's pressure fitted into the tank. It has a PVC pipe that flows up and pulls water from one side of the tank to the other side of the tank, creating filtration. So this filter is literally just a bed of bacteria. Now, the great thing about Madden filters that I really love is the fact that the shrimp can graze on it all day long. Surface area, grazing, it's all good for shrimp. It's very inexpensive. And this is a very basic setup that you can do at your house. Now, the one thing that we didn't address is water parameters. So water parameters is where everyone gets hung up on. And I'm going to break this down for you so it's as simple as possible. Water parameters don't have to be difficult. Everyone makes them complicated. I'm going to show you the very, very basic things that we do just to ensure that we have success. The first thing is distilled water. I actually went this morning to buy this for my tank at home. So you know that it's something that we use that we believe in. Distilled water, it's about, I think it's $1.20 per gallon right from Walmart. Very easy to get, very accessible. This has a TDS of zero. Now what is TDS? Total dissolved solids. That's where this bad boy comes in. This is called a TDS pen. You can get these on Amazon for about $20. I'll try to put a link down below. I might forget. I'm sorry if I do. If not, Frank, Frank, remind me. Remind me after this video. We need to put a link down there. And so get you one of these. When you test this water, it's going to be zero TDS. It might be one. It might be two. Most likely it's going to be zero. The next thing you're going to need, this is called Bee Shrimp Mineral. This is by Salty Shrimp. This is a great product. All it is is salt. Now, the reason you need this is you need something to add back in to your distilled water. Distilled water, again, has a TDS of zero. We need to get that up. GH plus B shrimp mineral is the thing that we need to add because you don't want to add cage into it. We won't get into the specifics of that. We have a whole video coming out on that, but just know you only need GH for caridina shrimp for the most part. So what you're going to do is you're going to take salt from your salty shrimp GH plus. You're going to add it to your distilled water. You can add it right in the jug until you get a TDS of 150. When you have a TDS of 150, you're done. That's it. That's all it takes. Your water is perfect every single time and you're going to be successful keeping some caridina shrimp. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope you like some crystal shrimp and tangerine tigers. And what I really hope is that you guys feel confident enough that you can keep caridina shrimp. It's not hard. They're actually much easier than most people make them out to be. And I feel like you guys can be successful. With the small amount of tools that we gave you today, you should have the confidence to go set up a Caridina shrimp and do it properly and do it so that you guys have success just like we have. If you guys ever have a question, feel free to email store at flipaquatics.com. Remember that we are hobbyists just like you. And we want you to be successful. So you guys make it a great day. As always, God bless. Catch you on the flip side.